Hey players, how you doing? Welcome back to Player's Guide. On this episode of Player's Guide, I'm going to be covering some retro indie show games. These are retro stylized modern games for your modern consoles that play or look like an older style game. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel. If you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. One small click from you makes a big difference on this channel. And you can expect to see many more videos like this related to homebrew games and retro indie games. You can also find the retro gaming news and a collector's guide where I talk about the state of video game collecting. Uh, but without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm going to start this one off with Blaster Master Zero. So if you're not familiar with Blaster Master, it is a series that started on the NES. And this new series, Blaster Master Zero, there's three games in the franchise, I believe, that I know of. Perhaps there's a fourth in their works. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, is most like the NES version. In fact, it tries to be a lot like the NES version with a couple new modern mechanics uh, that you might notice um, it would end a new storyline. So you're still chasing after a frog um, and running into different mutants. And it has a very similar, if not the exact same premise as the NES version where you are going to be exploring through side-scrolling stages and then jumping out of your vehicle and then going into doorways that go into like this top-down overhead uh, dungeon exploration mode and some of these dungeons aren't going to have anything some of them are going to have boss fights and some of them uh, will have uh, key items that you need to acquire uh, in order to advance to the next stage and uh, I've made it pretty far I'm on the seventh stage of this one I think there's an eighth so I haven't quite beat it yet but I am really enjoying this game and would like to recommend it to you Astalon Tears from the Earth. This is a really interesting game. Um, I enjoyed the gameplay mechanics of it a lot. It has a little bit of uh, the style of gameplay that you get with Trine or Lost Vikings if you've played those games uh, where certain characters are required to access certain areas. And as you progress throughout the game, you're able to access different areas of this tower that you're working your way uh, to the top of and learning more and more about the story of some of the monsters and demons uh, that possess this tower and your involvement in that and to do that you're gonna have to power up and level up your characters gaining new abilities uh, among the different uh, characters in your party to access the different areas but the way I found this was you didn't always have to change and you didn't always in some cases you do need specific characters but not always to access different areas there's also items that you acquire um, with different characters and to access different areas whereas in a game like Trine or Lost Vikings you're frequently changing between those characters this game was a little bit more relaxed with that and I really enjoyed that uh, especially being a single player game I know with trying you could do um, multiple players which makes it a little bit easier and flow a bit smoother um, but yeah just play single player load the way you do use that mechanic in this game but it's not as frequent I really enjoy and this this game is really good um, the grinding is very different you die you could be brought back to life and revive but every time you die gives you the ability to use these like blood points that you've accumulated throughout the stage to power up and level up your character and also unlock uh, key components uh, to the story and that's how you level up if you don't die you can't level up so another interesting mechanic in this game that I wasn't sure if I was gonna like but it turned out I really did another great game I would like to recommend Stormfront so this game reminded me sort of like a Smash TV Total Carnage style of uh, top-down overhead um, uh, shooter game. 
and that's exactly what it is and it it has some awesome music some awesome heavy metal music and uh, some different power-ups it's a bit gory I mean I'm totally into it but I did find that playing through it it uh, started to drag a little bit and got repetitive now I didn't beat the game so I can't tell you everything that happens about it nor do I want to spoil anything uh, in uh, these mini review compilations that I do either but if that interests you uh, which it did me because I'm into these cybernetic futuristic post-apocalyptic uh, mutinoid style games uh, I really thought that was interesting um, but it is a little bit more simpler than the last two games I mentioned a whole new world this is another game an indie game that I found very affordable cheap if you will uh, when I purchased it but I thought it was very good for the price uh, really good actually for the price and I would recommend this game this game is like this medieval type fantasy I don't even really want to say medieval but this fantasy style game where you work your way through these side-scrolling stages with pits and as you fall through the pits you enter this inverted upside down world and the controls are inverted and the screen is inverted so everything is kind of the opposite there could take a little while to get uh, used to if you really don't like that you may not like this game uh, I didn't think I was going to but it grew on me very quickly because of how well executed this was within this game and I wasn't too sure about that at first you're gonna be using it a lot in the game uh, bouncing up and down you're gonna be traversing through several side-scrolling stages boss fights and mini boss fights uh, and each stage you gain a new power-up that helps you uh, through different areas in the next stage um, either defeating other enemies quicker because it, they are weaker to those power-ups or accessing uh, different areas within that stage but this is a pretty good one and I think you can get it pretty cheap Celeste here is a game you may have already heard of this was a very popular game I believe it won uh, several awards and deservingly so this game has the tightest controls it has a uh, high level of difficulty you're gonna find it very challenging uh, but it, it starts you off not too far from where you left off that you get discouraged you're right there you want to keep continuing and pressing on it has an enticing story that draws you in and uh, makes you want to find out what's gonna happen next because uh, it really doesn't have too many boundaries it, it goes into all different areas where you're um, fighting an evil twin of yourself you're making friends on this mountain that you've decided to explore and climb uh, there's ghosts so there's a lot going on and it was really well done I think you should check this one out if you haven't I know a lot of you probably already have that's why I put this at the end of the video but for those of you who have stuck around and have not heard of this game, I would highly recommend this one as well. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Player's Guide. Uh, please consider subscribing to Player's Guide and following Player's Guide on all the socials. Remember, you can catch me um, once a week on Twitch streaming the Retro Indie Show. And throughout the rest of the week, there are some other streamers um, who like to stream different retro shows as well so you can catch that until next time i'll catch you on the flip side